I have problems with my <clears throat> camera cutting out uh, several times yesterday. Now I'm plugged in, so it won't be a battery problem. The last thing left to do here was the needle bearing. The needle bearing uh, simply slides on the end uh, with a circlip with no ears. Uh, once again, I use the tool with the knurled uh, finish to it because it gave me a better grip on that than any of the other tools I had. Uh, I did go with the larger diameter thrust washers. Um, didn't see any reason not to. It seemed to be an engineering improvement uh, from previous model years, so I left it like that. So that's, that's it. It's the input shaft, which engages directly with the crankshaft. Um, excuse me, with the crankshaft. So um, that's it. That's done and ready to go back in the motorcycle, back in the crankcase at least, uh, as soon as I get a chance. First we have to finish up our main sh or our out sh output shaft. The output shaft, uh, luckily uh, I have this other transmission so I can show you the uh, disassembly on that and inspection. Here is my original uh, output shaft assembly, which I think is going to be the one I'm going to use because it's cleaner around the uh, around the right where the uh, output pulley is going to be going to the rear wheel. It's a lot cleaner. The other one shows some uh, rust and corrosion and so forth. And the wear patterns uh, on the shaft itself are actually lighter on mine than they are on the other one. So probably going to go with the uh, actually with the older shaft, but. Here's the entire assembly. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, and if I don't, I'll just read it right off of here. Make sure I get this right. G is, yeah, that's your first gear. And then FDC. F is fourth gear, D is third gear, C is second gear, and then E is fifth gear. Okay? And uh, once you have this in your hand, uh, there are some circlips near the center of it, uh, but on the ends, these gears come right off in your hand. So we're going to lay them down side by side with the, uh, the existing one. I'm going to get this gear off, which was uh, first gear to begin with, but I also want to go ahead and get fifth off uh, because there's nothing keeping it on there and it slides. It's going to be a nuisance with it trying to fall off on me. So we'll go ahead and take that off and set it down the end here first gear unless the engine's running. If the engine's running this is a continuously engaged transmission so everything's always spinning all the time. If for some reason it's not you can't upshift because this shaft's not spinning which means that these little balls are captive in the slots on the shaft and when they're sitting in that position this gear can't move beyond what that little travel will allow. Okay, so it can't move normally uh, to engage, disengage if that shaft's not spinning. If the shaft is spinning, centrifugal force, okay, it can't move beyond a certain point because the balls are captive in those slots. You follow? Inside the gear itself, there are small holes, okay? The larger ones are oil holes. They don't have a bottom to them. They have no keeper function. Right next to them are slightly smaller holes that are shaped like um, like a cup with a hole in the bottom. Okay, and that's to hold these steel balls in place so they don't fly out. But nevertheless, until they're parked in that hole, you can't get this gear to move. If that shaft is spinning, centrifugal force makes the balls fly into those cups and sit there. Now the gear can move along the splines of the shaft. Okay. So, in order to get this gear off, basically, you have to set it like so, and then spin it.
and pick up on it. I'm going to have to try this a few times. Usually takes me a few tries. And it's not easy. Several tries. I got lucky a few minutes ago before I started making the video um, and got it to come right off for me. Now it wants to fight me just because it can. Yep, you can see all three balls are in position. So all we need to do is get it to get the balls to spin. There we go. <laughs> Just hit it by luck of the draw. Okay. There's my three balls and my gear. Okay. I'm going to set these three over here. I've already checked these before I started making the video. Um, they all appear to be healthy. <sighs> Nominal size on these is 3.95 millimeters. Uh, checked them with my little calipers here uh, and they all read good. I got some new ones from um, my friends at KTM but one of them and I checked these these are also 3.95 one of them actually doesn't have any chroming on it. It didn't pick up any chrome and I know that that chrome is going to be crucial in keeping it from sticking in one position or another. So those are going to stay in the bag for a couple bucks. I'm not worried about it. Uh, retaining uh, fourth gear, third gear, we got these circlips. Okay, I realize I keep doing this, and this is what you need to see uh, circlips here and here. Okay, so I'm going to pop those off. Once you get it onto the splined area, you just need to keep pressure on the uh, on the tool, and then I'm using my little pry tool just to walk it down the barrel of the shaft. There is a splined washer on here. As soon as you get free, you can see it. Don't lose that. You'll want to reuse that. Not very much wear on that at all. I wouldn't expect there to be. So that goes down next. And then the gear. Looking at the gear on this one, looking at the wear pattern around the openings, there is significantly less wear on this 08 transmissions um, third gear than on the one that came out. The one that I pulled out, the wear pattern's heavier and I've got a little more rounding um, at the edges where the dogs are engaging. Just looking at the wear pattern all the way around, the bushing itself, the insert. Um, As far as the bushing goes, it looks like about the same amount of wear. Going to carefully inspect these surfaces right here where the dogs engage um, and compare those before I reassemble it. See which one I want to go with. Remaining gear also comes off the same direction. Also has uh, a spacer washer in there. This is just a flat washer. It's not uh, the star or scalloped style like so. 
Then lay that gear down for inspection. And finally on the shaft, we've got another uh, one of these scalloped washers, but it's captive in the position that it's in. Can't go that way, obviously. And this way is blocked by a circlip. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that circlip because in any event, uh, if this shaft gets rebuilt, either now or in the future, it's going to need a fresh, um, uh, a fresh circlip. I don't know, I'm looking at that rust now, it's really superficial. I'm not even sure if it's through the chroming. It's just a little bit of discoloration. My big concern is that it looks like it's a high spot on the shaft. Like every time it came around, this part of the shaft, I can, I, you can't probably see that in the video, but there's an area about the size of my thumb where it looks like the shaft itself was out of round or rubbing against something, I'm not sure which. But it's just that one little area about 25 millimeters across where it's just got a wear spot and right at the very top of that, the crown of that is where the uh, what appears to be some light corrosion is occurring. If I look at the old shaft, the 06, there is none of that. So I've got to be concerned about concentricity, how well how true the shaft is to itself. I think I'm going to go with this one. Okie dokie. So let me go ahead and get this circlip off there just to say that I've completely stripped it. Reassembly, of course, is the, uh, is the reverse. Um, I've got new circlips, new spacer washers, and a new thrust washer down here on the end. So I'm going to reassemble that on this shaft. Um, and I'll show you real quick how I do that. And then I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, next steps after that are to start putting the uh, transmission back into the uh, crankcase, uh, install the new shift forks, uh, the new shift barrel uh, that, I, that I purchased, um, which I feel is going to have a better quality of uh, travel for the, uh, the tips of the shift forks. Not 100% sure yet. We'll see. I'm going to inspect it carefully compared to the part that I pulled out. This was an eBay purchase, if anybody remembers. Um, so, let's do that next. Reassembly. Let's start with my captive washer, which I'm going to reuse. Okay. Let me clean this up a little. I've got a brass, little brass brush here, which is perfectly suitable for cleaning these splines out. Brass being softer than steel, I'm not concerned about it doing any damage. Just want to make sure I got all the little boogers out of there so that everything moves like it's supposed to. Boogers being a technical term for stuff you don't want in your engine. Okay, so Uh, selecting different positions for the uh, washer and then sliding it back and forth just to distribute the uh, 
prelude that I put on there. Okay, so that's on. There's my old store clip. Let's get a fresh one out. And we'll put this in the discard pile. This one for that one. If I remember correctly, uh, when seeding um, your C clip in the uh, in the groove in the shaft. If you look carefully at the circlip, it's got a slightly rounded side and a, a really flat cut side. And if I remember correctly, you want the flat cut side towards the gear. That may be just my memory, but that's what I remember doing. Okay. Fully engaged. Um, looking at the gears. Not a significant difference. No. Not a significant difference in the uh, in the gears. The only thing that might be different is the clearance on the bushing, so I'm going to check that real quick. This is my 08. Here's my 06. So let's just take a quick reading and see what those look like. Six looking at twenty nine nine three nine one nine zero nine two nine three. So I'm going to go with nine two. So twenty nine nine two seems to be right. Check it one more time. Seems like 2985 is closer to being accurate. And it's going to arrive right here, which is 2973. Twenty nine seven five seven five. Seven five. Okay. Same journal on the O eight shaft. Seven five. Seven six. Seven four. So, I, virtually identical. Very little wear. Now the only difference is going to be the bushing bore on the O eight gear. Let me check that. It's identical. Yeah, no difference, no significant wear difference uh, between the uh, 06 and 08 uh, gears. So, based on the fact that the wear patterns are almost identical, I'm going to go back with my original gear. Like so. Make 
sure I remember to get a little pre-lube on there. Okay. Next we have thrust washer. Thrust washer is going to go away. The old one just does not show anywhere. I really could reuse it. In fact, I just might since I'm probably going to rebuild the other uh, main shaft and have it as a ready spare. Let's see what wear on this piece of steel looks like. One millimeter, 101, 101, so that's brand spanking new, 0 0.99, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 0.99, so virtually nowhere. I'm going to go with the old spacer washer. And then on this gear, make sure I get the boss in the correct direction. This gear has uh, a virtually flat side and a side with a boss. Boss goes towards the other gear. Beautiful. Couldn't ask for sweet, sweeter. Um, spline washer again. And then a circlet. This is a new circlet. The old one's already been retired. And we're going to keep this for this other shaft here. Okay. And that's uh, D, which is. Third gear. Third gear. Okay. And then F is fourth and then first. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do flat side towards towards the gear, towards the thrust washer. These 45s, by the way, are snap-on. You get what you pay for. There we go. In the groove. All the way around. Okay, now comes the really fun part as we attempt to get uh, fourth gear back on with these uh, little trapping bolts. Excuse me, and I'm going to write that down.
Okay, so the trick to this, first of all, you can't put grease into these holes to hold the ball because although it would eventually wash out, it'll take a long time. And in the interim period, you're going to have troubles uh, getting in and out of gear, getting in and out of neutral, um, or upshifting. So we don't want that. Uh, so my alternative is to use a tiny amount of assembly lube, and I do mean a tiny amount, just enough uh, to get a grip. I'm inspecting the dogs on both of these. Okay, so looking at the back of fourth gear here, and in particular the teeth, the wear pattern on the face of the teeth is identical, the dogs are identical. The only real difference I see is on the back side of the teeth here. There's definitely a wear uh, uh, evident here, a little tiny bit of rounding or a scuff more than anything else on the back of this one. And since I have my choice, uh, I'm going to go with the 08 gear on this. Um, just because it shows that lesser amount of wear. So I am going to swap on that one. Um, just noticing something here as I was checking the distance from one face dog to the other face. Um, and that is that on the 06, this dog, these three dogs, are out of synchronicity with, they're in a void space here on this side. Okay, on this one, they align. On the 08, I've got one, two, three, I've got six dogs. Oh, same thing here but the timing is different. Oh, and it's cut differently too. It's machined differently. On the uh, 06, this area is recessed. On the 08, it's recessed, but not as much. So I'm gonna have to study this for a minute uh, to see if I think it's gonna work the same. Okay, so after investigating this um, for a period of time, although the timing of the dogs has been changed, um, I can only imagine that that is an engineering improvement because the size of the dogs are the same, the engagement is the same, the measurement of the thickness of the dog area is the same. So all things being equal, uh, this should function the same as the old gear. 14.54 and that's on the newer gear it's even slightly thinner so that's the way we're going to go um, is with the newer gear with slightly less wear um, when you install this gear uh, make sure that these dogs the smaller ones are facing the engagement holes on your uh, third gear second gear excuse me second gear I'll get it eventually um, make sure that as you assemble this that the hole where the ball is going to be okay lines up with the slot on the shaft where the ball can rest okay that's what provides proper function for this gear uh, as I mentioned before take your time um, 
a little dab of assembly lube, and I mean just a tiny amount, uh, is going to be enough to hold uh, these balls in the cup. You want it to be able to spin out if you have to disassemble it. I'm going to do these right now. I mean, I'm putting just the tiniest amount on there that I think I can get away with. Because what I need them to do is to stay until until I can get the shaft assembled. So I got this one here and this one here done and then I'm going to have to lay it flat very gently keeping those two balls in place put just a small amount of and I mean a small amount of this assembly lube on the ball it's literally just what's coming off my fingers and I'm going to slip at the remaining holes right here I'm going to force it up from underneath with my thumb tuck it in the hole and then set the whole thing back down. Yeah, I lost one of my balls because I lost my grip on the gear. Oh, and there goes another one. This is the game best played with beer, not with uh, coffee. This is truly a test of your patience. You got to get all three of them in there. And then get them to stay once they're in there, which so far I'm struggling with. And I'd rather struggle than put too much goop because that's going to make a problem uh, for myself when it starts up. I'd rather do this a dozen times until I finally get them all sit properly okay now next step once again the slots got to line up with the ball so you've got to be absolutely certain that you've got it lined up properly and this will require more than one look That looks correct. Now we want to slowly raise the gear. And I can see a ball in each of the small holes. And I can see that the small holes are lined up with um, the slots in the shaft. Okay, now I turn it flat. And we're back to where we were earlier um, with uh, the gear being locked on the shaft. Should be. Yep. So, there you are won't come off because now in any position I put it in the balls are not in the holes inside the gear they're in the slots on the shaft and because of that it acts like a stop won't let that gear come off once it's spinning it also won't allow the gear to engage as you can see it's not engaging here I can't force it to engage okay and that's also desirable you want the shaft spinning in order to upshift Okay, so in order to get my last gear on, um, actually I can do that without concern. Um, it, it, I would say it'd be easier if it's all the way over, but this is just on a bushing. Um, so I can go right on with that, no worries. I do need a thrust washer, and inspecting this gear versus the, o, the 06 versus the 08, again, it's a wash really identical so 
I'm going to go with a new, well, let me see, let me check this washer. This is a very thin washer to begin with. Point four eight, point four nine, point four nine, point four nine. It's supposed to be point five. Now, that doesn't sound like a big difference, but when you're only talking about a half a millimeter to begin with, uh, for thrust surface, if this reads the new one reads a solid point five, uh, I'm going to put the new one in. And it does. In fact, it reads 0 0.52, 0 0.52, 0 0.52, yeah. So that old that washer has uh, gone past, I think, useful life. I can see the wear on it, and it's really shaved down by rubbing against first gear. So I'm going to give it a fresh one. Once again, a little dab of pre-lube. On she goes, and there goes my gear. All right, only thing left is fifth gear. Which inspecting this one versus the old one. This is the 06. Not much wear and tear. Teeth look beautiful. And we're going to go with the original 06, fifth gear, back on the shaft. And there she is. Rebuilt, ready to go back in. Um, that's all there is to that. These engage like so. Very nice. Okay, that's a transmission rebuild. How about that? So, that's it for today. And unfortunately, I have to get ready for work for tomorrow. So, it's all from the Busted Knuckle Garage. See you soon.